Salutations, my name is Phil, aka JC Servant, and uh, today I'm going to be showing y'all how I do line art in Clip Studio Pro. Uh, funny thing here is I'm really not a, a, a good artist or anything like that. This is a side hobby. I've uh, been doing it since I was about... I don't know, 14 years old, which is a long time ago. I've been drawing on and off over the years. Uh, and, and eventually, we got the ability to scan in our drawings into the computers. And I started using my computer to ink uh, and color uh, my drawings, uh, mostly coloring to begin with, and then eventually learning how to shade and eventually uh, learning how to, to ink with the computer. But I never really got the hang of it. I used a program back in the day called um, Paint uh, Paint uh, Studio or something like that. Paint Shop Pro. And it had it had a couple different ways you could kind of do some some inking, but it it never quite felt right. Uh, even if I used a tablet or something, and 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 then the lines would get all kinds of weird thickness as and they would be uneven. It it, it, it was just not great. Conversely, when I drew on paper and I used pens there, uh, those lines wouldn't come out great either. Uh, then, then many, many moons later, about, I don't know, four or five years ago, a friend of mine told me about Manga Studio, which is now Clip Studio Pro, uh, that it's a great program for specifically for drawing, you know, comics and anime and the such. So I decided to kind of give that a shot and played with it a bit and learned a few things. Uh, my my techniques and all that other fun stuff, again, full disclaimer here, I'm an amateur. This may be the only tutorial video I ever do um, because I found out that the way I do my line drawing is actually, according to him, and he's a professional, is something that a, a lot of people could benefit from. And he encouraged me to do a video uh, to show everybody. I also received a comment on DeviantArt about my line art on my inking. Uh, and then they complimented it and wanted to know how I did it. So rather than try to answer that uh, through a long post, I said, why don't I just whip up a, a video? Because I do these about video games on from time to time and theology from time to time. So uh, let's do the one thing I know how to do pretty well <laughs> uh, in the world of drawing and make a, a training video out of it. So we're going to learn how I do uh, that line art with uh, Clip Studio Pro. So I'm going to shrink my big fat ugly face here so we can get to my desktop and see the drawing in question. So this was the drawing uh, that, that, that drew the question mark uh, about how I do my line art. Uh, so you can kind of, I wanted to first show you guys what that, what that drawing looks like you know, pretty much full size. It's a little bit easier to see the, the line art if we get rid of uh, the layers with the colors and the shading. And then you're just left pretty much with the layer with the inks there. And you can you can see, you know, the lines are, are very consistent and very sharp uh, on the ends for a lot of the, uh, uh, the, the, the lines that are going on there. This was something that I really had a hard time mastering with the pens. I saw other artists who could make their lines look thinner at the end and do it consistently. Uh, and, and I had problems doing that, whether it was by ink pen or even on a computer. But like I said, uh, with Clip Studio Pro, I, I figured out something, uh, a couple things that makes that a little bit easier. It works, uh, the way I do this, uh, general, most, the vast majority of my line work, I use the curve tool. So you wanna come over here, and, or the figure curve tool, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, it's the letter U by default. I don't think I've really changed many of the shortcuts in the program. And um, when you do so, you've got a couple of different options here, but I'm in the, the, direct, the direct draw here and we have uh, various types of curves we can pick with. Now these I have meddled with, so these probably not gonna look exactly the same as what you have if you're using default settings or if you messed around with this a whole lot. Uh, Clip Studio, very powerful program. Uh, I haven't even begun uh, to scratch the surface and, and everything that it can do. Uh, and, and, and this thing is so feature rich that even professionals who are using this full time are discovering new things almost every day and new techniques uh, to improve uh, prove their work. So uh, some of you probably already know this, but for those of you who don't, you, you, you can create different types of curves. 
uh, different styles and stuff and you can use the different options around this area here to change everything from the thickness to the opacity, whether or not the line's anti-alias, uh, which I, uh, you know, from my old days where I would draw a bunch of raster art, uh, I, I would, didn't really much care for, for any sort of anti-aliasing because later on when I would use the paint bucket tool to fill it in, <laughs> it would, it would conflict with the, with the different colors of pixels that are on the edge. So I just wanted black and white. And that way, when I did the, the fill bucket, uh, it would, it would get every single white pixel and would color right up to the line. So that's just me. I'm sure other people have other techniques, but uh, I use the paint bucket a lot for my coloring and anti-aliasing set to zip uh, ensures that I get uh, coloring all the way to the line. Uh, and then this option here, this is the key. And we're gonna talk about this separately, but it's vector magnet. But before I do, I just wanna say like when you're setting the curve, uh, there is a starting and ending option. And that that is what kind of sets whether or not the line gets thick or thin at the end. So over here, for example, you notice that the starting is nearly zero. It says, if you can't see it in YouTube there, it says 1.7, the ending is 39.1. The bigger that value is, the, 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 the slower or the line will go to like a thin edge on that particular end. So if I crank this all the way up, I'll get a really, uh, a line that really slowly gets thinner and thinner as it gets towards that particular end. But if I turn that to zero, the line will immediately end. Uh, and we'll give a couple of examples of that, but I'm sure many of you are familiar with how that works. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, if, if you want, want, to, want to see me experiment more with that, feel free to let me know. Maybe I'll make a video on that too. But I generally keep that uh, pretty, you know, for this particular curve, I have a curve that starts off thick and ends thin. I've got a curve that's pretty much thick from beginning to end. You can see here, if I set it thicker, you can see it really just kind of, you know, ends pretty thick. And then you have the curve that is thin, thinning on either end of it, right? So I use these three different curves throughout, you know, all of my drawings. You can kind of even see it, you know, in the drawing here. And uh, I don't know how easy it is to see my mouse, but you can see, uh, you know, here at the top of her head, uh, there's a line that started out thick, but as it comes over here, it gets really thin. A lot of these lines are the ones that are thick at the beginning and then get thin at the end. Um, but then you have lines that, like this line here, is thick all the way through until it starts a new line. Okay. Um, so, so this, uh, so, yeah, different curves. Now, before I go on uh, and, and we get to the good stuff, I do want to show everybody here, you know, every artist, from what I understand, draws with different tools and everything like that. And some people draw directly on the monitor with one of those fancy on the screen monitor drawing things and whatnot. I am using, personally, I just go for a Wacom, a Wacom tablet. Uh, this is one I got off of Amazon. Uh, you can get these, this is a medium size one, I think, and you can get that for under 200 bucks, easy. So that's what I'm using here. It's a nice solid pad, comes with this nice little pen and you just draw on it and it shows up on the screen. And and at first that's difficult, but the more you practice with it, the more you get used to it and, and, and it eventually becomes kind of second nature. Want me to do a video on that? Maybe I'll do a video on that, but I just, if people, just in case people want to know, that's that's how I do my drawings. Now we'll shrink the ugly mug again. And as soon as I remember how to do that here. All right. And now uh, let's show you how I do. Uh, let's, let's go over how I actually make these lines. Now, one of the key things that I've noticed and what really prompted this video, there are, uh, there are videos out there already to show people how to do line art. Uh, and there's various techniques. And there's even videos out there uh, with professionals doing line art the way I do it, with one big exception that we're going to talk about, the vector magnet. And, and that's what's important. And that's why I'm doing this video, because otherwise I would have just referred people to the videos of the professionals doing it using my technique, because they'd probably do it better. And they do it for a living. Uh, so, but, but because I haven't been able to find any videos that actually explain what vector magnet is and how that can improve your curve drawing, uh, here I am, I'm going to do one here. Because uh, I want to point out here, you'll notice that in, in the face here of the character, uh, what you might have noticed is there's actually different curves here. It can, can be kind of hard to tell, but this is not just one big curve. There's a curve here, there's a curve here, there's another curve on the chin, a curve over here, but they're all connected. So it's one seamless line uh, that curves around, but it looks very, very seamless. Uh, that is uh, the vector magnet at work. Uh, so. Uh, that, that's what we're gonna we're gonna show you how that works 
So let me pull up a rough drawing. So this is usually how my drawings start, right? This is a pencil drawing. We're going to zoom in on the face here because we're going to work on the face for a bit. But we got a we got a pencil we got a pencil drawing of of of, of the character here, uh, and and now we're ready to lay down some inks, right? So uh, when we do our inks, uh, be, you know, in order for vector magnet to work, we are going to draw these lines on a vector layer. Uh, Clip Studio, I tell you, back in the old days, I would use raster almost exclusively because you could really edit a lot with 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 raster, pixel by pixel, and with the vectors, the old-fashioned vector layers, at least in the programs I used, uh, you can move those lines around in the such. You could uh, edit their points, um, but but you really couldn't do pixel for pixel editing. But Clip Studio Pro uh, has so many powerful options. Uh, that even in your vector layers, you can do uh, a lot of uh, pixel work if, if you need to. Maybe we'll do some examples of that here, but uh, I use vectors for my line drawings, for my line layers all the time, and, and it works just fabulous. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new uh, vector layer here, and we'll just call this, you know, Ink 2 or whatever. We're just playing around. All right, and pull up our our curve tool. And, and they, so for each one of these curves, um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask myself, do I want to start thick and thin and all that other jazz? Then I want to make sure the vector magnet is turned on. Now, I mentioned before, this option may not be right here for you. It is not on by default, I believe. You got to go and play in the uh, preferences for that tool, uh, which is, I believe, uh, this little wrench right here. It's very small. It's very tiny. You got to click on that and you get all kinds of, of different uh, tools to play with and options to play with and all this other fun stuff. Uh, but under correction, we have vector magnet. And if, if, if this little eyeball here is clicked off, then the option doesn't show up here on the left. Uh, Clip Studio is so powerful, it gives you the options of which options you see on a daily basis in your toolbars. So, and by default, this one's turned off. It's a shame because I think everyone should be using the vector magnet. Um, but we're going to go ahead and turn that option so it's visible. And then, of course, you, you know, while you're here, or you can do it over here, you can set how strong is the magnet. And we'll explain what that vector magnet is in a minute. It actually kind of describes it down here. Uh, there's also an option here, ability uh, to snap, um, uh, which you know has to do with snapping to rulers and things like that. I usually keep that on. I do use the, the rulers uh, when I'm doing uh, buildings in the background that need a lot of perspective work in the such. So it's nice to have those snap um, when you want them to snap. So you can turn, you know, turn that option on while you're in here. But yeah, make sure that options are visible at the very least so you can turn them on and off with you want. So vector magnet, what that does is almost what it says, which is as you're drawing one vector line, if you start another line close by and the beginning point is close to the end point of this line, it'll connect them together like two points of, uh, you know, opposite sides of a magnet. It'll just go click and it'll click them together. And that's what keeps my lines consistent. When I was watching this professional do this uh, on YouTube, he was he was just doing one line after the other after the other, and he was doing a really great job, super super you know expert. But I could see that each segment of his curvy line was off by a few pixels when he was zoomed in. Zoomed out, most people probably would never know. Uh, but you know, when it comes to doing good artwork, the devil is in the details. So we really want those pixels lined up when we can. Now there's some other techniques that can help line up your curves too, uh, that I've seen people do, but for me, vector magnet just facilitates the entire process and makes your drawing faster. So we're going to pick on the face here, right here. Cause we got this, we got this big, you know, face curve right here, uh, on the right side or well, right for me, left for her, I imagine, but we got this big curve here and we're going to show you how we're going to take multiple curves and put this together to, to make the outline of the face look seamless. So, so in, or in order to do vector magnet, we're going to be, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to be doing curves. We're going to be doing them on a vector layer. So that's very important that you're on a vector layer. You got that vector magnet turned on. Uh, so got my pencil drawing here now, and and we're going to go ahead and draw a curve. Whoops, getting a little crazy there. Let's. We're going to draw a curve around the face now. Uh, as I as I mentioned, like ve what vector magnet does, it allows you to make multiple curves and automatically connect the end and star points so that your drawing and your line seem seamless. Um, well, are seamless. 
Uh, but the key here is we can't zoom in too, too close because vector magnet, uh, it works kind of on the idea that, uh, that, that uh, on the percentage of how far away, not necessarily how many pixels you are in the drawing, but how many pixels away you are on the screen at the time. So the more you zoom in, the, 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 the less uh, the magnet will work. Uh, so the more you're zoomed out, uh, you know, it's about how many pixels you are from the end point. So for example, as I draw this forehead here, and if you've never used the curve tool before, uh, pretty easy. We drag a line out and we want to do it to about the point where the curve really starts to, the midpoint where it starts to turn around from the next turn. Uh, the more you play this, the more you get used to it. Let go, hover your pen up, get that curve right where you want it, and then touch the screen. And that sets the line down. Uh, but then when we do the next curve, I'm purposely gonna miss it by just a couple of pixels here but you're gonna see that vector magnet lines up the beginning of this line right with the end of the last line just perfectly. And I'm gonna bring it up here, let go, hover above, and pull it in to kind of get where the where the face will go in a little bit. And I, I would probably edit this and this isn't exactly the transition I like here, um, but we're just kind of going through this for example. And then just continue to do this all the way down. And the more you do it, the more you get used to it, uh, the easier it gets. Um, you just kind of do you know, one after the other and the other. And Vector Magnet does the hard work of making sure that as I lay down each section of line that, uh, that it connects. So now we can kind of zoom in and on these places where I, where I started and end, you can see that the line is very, very smooth. It, there's no point where the line was off by a few pixels where one line started and another one ended. Um, you certainly criticize whether some of the changes are a little bit uh, in direction or a little too erupt. That's on me as the artist. But the tool does a really great job of making this seem like a nice seamless curve. You kind of get that, you use that same tool in the lips. But again, if you're zoomed in, you do have to be... Uh, just cognitive of the fact that the vector magnet is is going to pick like I mean, this is a great example here so um, we do want the edge of the lip to be thin so we're gonna use a curve on one end tool here and we're gonna we're gonna kind of draw that line and draw that curve right here okay um, but if we want to connect it on this end you can kind of see where vector magnet takes over you can see where it does that jump right there uh, so it has to be, it has to be pretty, uh, like, because I'm this far zoomed in, I do have to be within a few pixels, uh, to get that vector magnet to click in. And then I can kind of let go, uh, and then pull, pick, hover my, 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 uh, pin, uh, or roll with the mouse or whatever, uh, pick a point that makes the curve look just right, then touch, touch it. And, and there we go. There's my line, uh, to get the other half of the bottom lip here. Uh, and just to provide an example, I'm going to zoom out. And here I can be a little bit more off because I'm zoomed out so far and you can see it grabbed even though I was clearly um, a half a dozen pixels below <laughs> uh, the, the first line, it grabbed it. And you know, there we go, there's our second line. And you can just, you can just do this throughout. I can do this for the whole, the whole drawing. And if you guys want me to do a full drawing on line one day, I, I'll certainly be happy to do that. But, but that's how that works. Vector, vector magnet is your friend. For uh, for the hair, you can be a little bit more looser, and I tend to use more of the curves that have beginning and the ends, and you can set your strengths at your curves and all that other fun stuff. But here we just do some broad streaks, and you'll see that I'm drawing faster. I'm zoomed out a bit more because I want to get this this hair uh, done in a hurry. Um, but you can see because I'm zoomed out a little bit more, you can see where vector magnet really kicks in. It's right here. So it's, again, it's depend on how many pixels away you are on the screen, not necessarily pixels in your drawing. And that's something to kind of keep in mind. Uh, but there we go, let go. And I can just draw more of those and, you know, and it'll grab that edge. Now, sometimes with hair, uh, I want that line maybe to cross over a bit. I didn't want vector magnet to kick in. At any point in time, you can go and turn vector magnet off here and just go into free form you know, curve drawing and get a little bit of crossover that you like to see in here because it's supposed to be a little a little messy. It doesn't need to be exactly point for point on the end as well. Um, it's supposed to look like I drew it a little bit faster with a pen or a pencil or whatever. So uh, that's perfectly fine to do it that way. It, again, it's just, it's, it's however you want. The tool's there for you uh, to, to turn it on and turn it off when you would like. Uh, and, and there we go. Now, one last thing I'll, I'll do here on the, on the subject of curves uh, and line art and the such. 
there is one other tool that I use once in a while. I'll use I'll use what you see here, this technique, for the vast majority of my drawings. I will make the lines vary thickness, uh, of course, and that could be a whole nother uh, discussion. Uh, yes, you know, whether it's eyebrows or outlines that are you know for the outfit versus outlines on the outside of the body that should be thicker. I could go on and on and on. But uh, and for the most part, I will use this curve tool with various settings uh, to, to do the entire picture that you saw earlier. Uh, but there is one other type of curve, uh, and that Back is lines right the here. figure. And oh, this no. one, uh, this is what I use for freehand curves, usually to show some sleekness in the hair or something like that, maybe in the uniform, if, if it's more of a, a uniform that has some sort of light glistening off of it or something like that. And, and these are freeform lines, not like the curve. So those I'm just going to basically do kind of this S pattern with my hand. And when I let go, it gives it a nice thickness from beginning to end. I, uh, yeah, where it looks like I just took a pin and, whoosh, and it'll smooth it out a bit. And there's different options uh, on here, like post correction that makes things look a little bit smoother. You can crank that up and get yourself a little bit of a better line. Um, that looks a little bit straighter like that. And there's a little bit more correction going there if that's what you're going for. Again, lots of lots of different options to get that to look the way you want. But I'll use that a lot in the shading of the hair, and you'll see that when we look at the the actual drawing. But that's what I do: a little little glisten here, a little glisten there. And you can play with the the thickness there because on the top it should be a little bit thinner. So there we go. So uh, hopefully this 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 quick little tutorial helps some of you all out with your line art if you're using. Clip Studio. I have no clue how it works in other other programs. I've been told that maybe this is a Clip Studio exclusive. Who knows? Uh, but uh, maybe maybe y'all can let me know down in the comments what you think or how you draw. Um, we'll just put the whole picture back up there again. But that's that's um, that's normally how it looks right there. That's the whole thing when it's all said and done. So um, hopefully this was helpful. And if there's anything else, any other questions you have. Uh, please let me know. Uh, thank you so much. I hope uh, I hope that you guys have a great time uh, drawing uh, and exploring the hobby and sharing what you know with other people. Uh, and until next time, may God bless you.